with Nutrition by Eric here. Uh, here to talk with you today about water. Uh, water is uh, makes up uh, 70 to 80 percent of each of us and uh, there's many different ways um, you can filter your water, different kinds of water, and let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, um, maybe think about how much water do you drink. I learned in school we should learn about uh, we should be drinking about half of our body weight in water. So if you weigh 150 pounds, that's 75 ounces of water. Now that may vary. I have um, been going to an acupuncturist, and he says you don't have to go overboard because the more you drink, the more you urinate, urinate the more you urinate, you actually lose a little a bit of chi. So it's to each their own. But I like to think that you know water is important. A lot of people like to drink coffee or soda, which, yeah, has water in it, but um, often you'll need more water to maybe process out all of the sugar and the caffeine. And I've heard that uh, caffeine dehydrates you. I might have to look into that to make sure. Now, um, if you like to know about filtered water versus, let's say, tap water, uh, tap water is uh, likely to have lots of stuff in it stuff probably you don't want. There's pharmaceuticals. Since uh, most of most tap water is recycled from everybody else's water, I'm just thinking now, I wonder if it's from like toilet water, probably, because this supports what I'm about to say is that uh, pharmaceutical chemicals end up in tap water. So your Prozac, your birth control, Tylenol ends up in your drinking water. So I guess it do. That's kind of weird, I didn't know that, but now I'm thinking, hmm, water's water, huh? Flush your toilet, drink out of the tap. <laughs> so there is filtering, though, with every city. If you're in the U.S., you can get a report from your city or your county. They make them public. You have to call them to find out where or look on your um, city or county's website. And at least once a year, they do a report. They say they found, you know, so much you know, good and bad things. They'll tell you like uh, arsenic, for example, or uh, chromium or things that, that aren't so great. But what's interesting about water, that I learned that most people don't know, because most people think water, oh, H2O, boom, that's it, just H2O. But that's not natural water. Like natural water that you would find in nature would be spring water. And spring water has a, lots of small amounts of other things, like a little bit of salt, um, a little bit of um, probably copper, barium, um, a lots of little, little trace amounts. That's the water. Why? Because it's rolling over rocks and it picks up this stuff and, and dirt and things like that. So that's kind of what natural water really is. It's mostly water. Um, I want to look it up real quick. Uh, how much water is H2O versus other things? So while I'm looking that up, yeah, so know that there's a little bit of other things in it. And if it doesn't have that, and that's uh, distilled water. So you can distill water, buy distilled water by steaming it, and you pull off that steam, and that just goes to just plain H2O, because it's just hydrogen and oxygen. But if you drink that, that can actually pull those little bits of amounts of minerals that it would find in nature, which is really interesting. So it can be used to be harmful if it's taking away minerals that you would rather have in your body, then that's not so great. But, but if there's minerals that you shouldn't have in your body, it can actually pull those out. So I've heard some people say it can be very, very good for detoxing. You drink a lot of distilled water, it's going to pull ever so slightly some of those um, toxins in your body out. It kind of attracts it to water. And maybe you want, I guess, here, so I just happen to have some. Uh, these are trace minerals from a seabed in Utah, and it has good minerals that you do want. Let's see if it's the sun. Um, yeah, boron, potassium, another good one, sodium, magnesium, uh, 
chloride, not to be confused with uh, chlorine, just a little different. Lithium, if you stay calm, I bet. So yeah, so that's interesting thing about the dynamics of water. You might not know that all these subtle things happen on a microscopic, on a molecular level in the water. The bad stuff that I mentioned that might be in the tap water that you may not like. And then there's the pH, and then the, um, the, the pulling effect through distilled water. So now it gets a little bit more complicated, right? Now, what kind of water should you be drinking? Should you be filtering it? Should you be calling a company to bring it to your house? Well, I think the best is to filter it in your house. I, I, here's another. I happen to have a little uh, zero water um, filter, just a tabletop one. And that's pretty good. I think that's, uh, I like it because it filters out fluoride. And when I say fluoride, it's never really fluoride. When they, people say fluoride is good for you, uh, which I don't agree with, it's usually a um, something like sodium fluoride. Like some say, people say so sodium is good or bad for you. Well, it's never just sodium. It's usually sodium chloride. It usually has to bind with something else. That's just how it works and then how nature works. Um, so you can um, look into filtering. Now, I think it's important to figure out what's the best filter based on the water you have, not just what Amazon or you know somebody down the street says or the Kanjin water people say, which is a neat sounding machine. But yeah, you want to kind of kind of fit your filter like you'd fit on the pair of shoes. You know, you you're a size ten, you get a size ten shoe. You are size eight, you get a size eight. Um, so you can you can fit it. There are companies. There's a guy, uh, Friends of Water, um, on the West Coast, on the North Carolina, there's a company, I'll see if I can remember the link, they also use your water reports to find the best filter for you. And they might have you get a, a three-stage, a four-stage, you know, these is canisters. They look, oh, kind of like this, like multiple, you might see in there, multiple, um, uh, oh, what are they called, containers that, like multi-stage parts of the filtration process and they go under your counter and if you have an RO or reverse osmosis you'll have a big tank because it uses a lot of water to filter so I don't think it's really that efficient and it's not that good unless your water is really bad you know you don't need the RO usually it's um so yeah you just get something to match your filter now should and also get something for your shower because your skin also is a, just um, drinking is the only way you get water in your body. Whatever goes in your skin ends up in your body too. So that's why it's important to be conscientious of what you put on your skin. Creams, suntan lotions, perfumes, colognes. Yeah, and it may not be a big deal when you're younger. I notice as you age, it, it, you know, these things kind of uh, accumulate. And there's all kinds of things. There's hormone disruptors, how much plastic you're drinking. And has the plastic bottle been in a hot place? But I digress. So... I would definitely say get a filter that's best suited for you. And I something I don't hear anybody really talking about is get it tested. You can. It's a little extra step. I I personally don't. I like the idea, though. Like, I got a filter. I searched for years for a really good filter. Um, it was from my mom's place, and I got it. And it tasted really good. I could tell by the taste. That's one thing I could tell. It made a big difference when I put this filter in. It was a real pain to put in. But I got it. It had uh, it's three cartridges. That's a word. Cartridge. <laughs> the things that I said looks like this. So uh, Three cartridges. And like one was for chlorine. And one was for sediment. And I don't know. One for chemicals. But it was really neat. Um, and I could taste a big difference. And then you one thing... Once you get a filter, remember to change them. The trick is, you know, how long does it last? Is one month, six months, a year? So if in a perfect world, I would have a water testing company available. So I could send them my tap water and the filtered water and have them say, okay, is the filtered water really filtering? And if so, is it up to the highest standard possible? And if so, then, you know, how often should I change it? You maybe send it in every three, four months or so. So these are just some ideas on how to keep your water the, um, 
in, in the best way possible. Uh, now, as far as shower filters, now we, showers are definitely use more water than drinking. I mean, I think a shower, a typical shower can take, can use five to 10 gallons. Most people don't drink that much in the day. So your, your shower filter will be um, a different kind of filter. It doesn't have to be as, make the water as pristine as your drinking filter. So it'll look, you know, about the size of a fist usually. I'm not gonna see if I have one, I don't have one somewhere. But you can look them up, you know, just look them up online, shower filter, and then if you have a, a website that has reviews, see what people say. Uh, one thing I think is very interesting, find out if your tap water is uh, treated with chlorine or both chlorine and ammonia. The difference being uh, chlorine gets filtered one way, and when you mix chlorine and ammonia, it's a little more toxic. And uh, I'm trying to think of the name. It makes a name. Um, sorry, I gotta look it up. Chlorine, chlorine plus ammonia, and that will take a different filter. And uh, chloramine, yeah, chloramine is when you mix chlorine and ammonia. So. If your water treatment facility uses both of those, you're better off getting a shower filter and a drinking water filter that can handle filtering chloramine. Okay, you know, you know, you may not. Some people notice a difference with the filter. You know, their hair is a little. You know, feels better. Some people feel like their hair doesn't actually discolor. Uh, in our backyard, I can see where the um, where the sprinkler hit the fence. You can see the water is like it actually bleached the wood. It's a wood fence, and you can see it definitely has an effect. So there's definitely chlorine in the water, and that's why you know over time, what it is, a lot of people don't take health seriously because it's a slow effect. When you eat poorly or you have bad stuff like chlorine in your water, it's slow to have an effect. Um, unless you do some detox or you're super healthy, or you have an amazing immune system like Superman or Superwoman, often the effects show up years or decades later. That's why it's so important. That's why I'm really an advocate and I'm really into, into um, staying healthy as early as you can to get as many good years of good health in you through good food, good water, sunlight, grounding, getting acupuncture, doing all the things you can to avoid the cumulative effect of a lot of negative stuff. You know, you eat a lot of bad stuff. And, oh, this is fine, you know, days, weeks, months. But after a couple of years, that mac and cheese out of the, uh, out of the box and that um, ramen noodles, 10 for a dollar, start catching up with you. Lack of, you know, and the lack thereof, the lack of eating fruits and vegetables and the pesticides. And, you know, I saw with my own dad. My dad had Parkinson's, and he, um, I read Parkinson's is from exposure of, of pesticides and chemicals. He worked with, uh, he worked uh, in an industry that had a lot of chemicals, and I saw it firsthand. <clears throat> um, so do your best to avoid it early. Curb, sorry, my phone is making a lot of noise. I might shut that, shut off all the sounds. Um, yeah, so do do your best to um, heed heed warnings. Uh, to you know, health is not just doing things like going to the gym and getting massage and acupuncture and having a superfood and eating paleo or vegan or keto. It's also about the avoidance of the bad stuff, the toxins that are so accessible, that are so insidious. You know, there's PF, I was just reading um, before I started this video, PFAs, you know, uh, I forget the name, plurofluoro, not, it sounds like plurofluorocarbon, that's not it, but they're called forever chemicals, they just don't go away. I'm sure you, you know, there's a way, but they're called forever chemicals because they just show up everywhere. You can wash things, 
Uh, they're in clothes, they're in you know underwear, and they're in uh, things you don't want in different parts of your body, basically. Uh, you don't want, but it's just plastic. They, I don't know if you know, there's a study that they tried to find blood from different people all over the world without plastic. They couldn't. Everybody has plastic in their body, in their blood. Uh, the only f way they, they did happen to find some batches of blood without plastic, and it was from soldiers from the uh, Korean War. Okay, so I'm not saying it's necessarily a good or bad thing, but I think if I had the choice, I'd rather not have plastics in my blood. You know, this is just the world we live in. It's so toxic. And yet, you know, you don't see everybody choking and coughing. Like I've seen videos of like a smoggy area in China and other places where it's just not safe to go outside. But you know, like, you know, sometimes it is like that from fires and lots of environmental stuff where you live near places that have um, power plants, you know, and then that does a, does a number on the body too, being around... So basically, <laughs> this is not to fear monger or, or, or to create unnecessary sense of fear or urgency, but you know it, it's not that hard to get exposed to bad stuff, right? You know, it's really the day our day and age, the modern society, society has so much pollutants and toxins and electrical and magnetic things. It's um, yeah, it affects some people more than others. Some people aren't that affected and some people are are more and everybody's a little different so you have to you know kind of figure out what what, what you think is a is an acceptable level and you kind of I think have to prepare in in your mind um, years in advance okay how I think of you know I don't know how old you are watching this video but if you're in your 30s you Try to think, okay, try to mentally go up 10 years at a time. Okay, if I'm 30-ish now, how, how will I be at 40 and 50 and 60? This can kind of help gauge, or people in your family, how are they? Are they, you know, fit and vital? Or are they in a wheelchair? You know, a lot of, a lot of medical diabetes and health conditions. So look around you and see, you know, are you leading a lifestyle that seems to be on a trajectory and, and you feel like you're doing the right things that can help you last for decades and decades, then maybe you don't need that much. Maybe you're already filtering water, you're eating organic. Maybe you're already meditating and praying and going to spas and taking wellness trips. So maybe you're on the right track and maybe you just have a few tweaks or maybe you just have to, you know, say, yeah, I'm all good. But if you're not, if you're eating fast food a lot, you know, concern you have health conditions, you know, time isn't always um, helpful as you get older. Your body doesn't necessarily, why you make it wiser <laughs> on its own, I find you need to kind of have a bit of a game plan because you're not in a society, most likely that's going to help you improve your health over time you have to you have to take it in your own hands to um, ensure that you're in the right track because if you just do minimal planning or no planning or you just eat junk food and drink soda and you know I don't think I, I hope it does work out well but I, I'm leaning toward it's unlikely so that's why I make these videos I share this information because it's not necessarily a secret, but um, if you want to avoid where um, you want to avoid bad health and, and have good health, it does take work. And that's how I got where I'm at. I'm not where I want to be, but I've read a lot. I've invested on in a lot. I've watched documentaries. I've tried supplements and and I think that's the best way. You have to kind of be a bit of a scientist and a bit of a researcher. Um, but I digress yet again. Um, back to water. Yeah, get uh, get a water filter, the best kind you can. 
And as far as uh, another thing I wanted to mention, should you get a whole house one? Well, that's up to you because if you're washing, really think about think about it. Water is going to be consumed, right? You're drinking with it. You're cooking with it, probably, if you're cooking like rice or pasta. Um, you're showering in it. You're washing your hands in it. You know, you don't need to be that meticulous, but um, also at the same time, you have to do what's practical and what works for you. So something to keep in mind. I know I threw a lot at you today. Um, get, But yeah, look into it. Try to um, know it's more doable than you think. You know, it's uh, if you can get your water tested. I've not done this. An idea that it, uh, I just thought of, I thought of earlier rather, is maybe if you're near a university, see if they have like a lab and see if you can talk with someone in the university to test your water and say, hey, I'm curious, you know, what's in my water? Or you know, find, a, find a, um, a company that you can send a sample to. Because maybe you have a very good water. I don't know many people in the U.S. Probably uh, people in the more rural area may have better water than people in the city. Um, and if you're in a well, you may have good water, but you might have things in that well that is that are harmful. You might have a um, be near like a lead deposit in you, lead in your water from the well. So there's lots of variables. Just something, again, something else to look into. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you stay again uh, healthy and wealthy and wise and all that good stuff. So. Any questions, uh, check the description, and you can always find me at Nutrition by Eric. Thanks all, and until next time.